Shalom, I'm Tony Robinson of Restoration of Torah Ministries, and today we're going to be looking in Exodus chapter 3. Actually, we'll get a little bit of chapter 2, but uh, mainly Exodus chapter 3, and I've entitled uh, today's lecture, Moses' Rendezvous with, An with Adonai at the Burning Bush. Moses' Rendezvous with Adonai at the Burning Bush. And what we're going to do today <clears throat> is we're... Uh, going to have a practical lesson here on how to find the achiastic structure. This is a, a practical lesson on how to find one. I'm going to show you uh, how I was able to uh, determine that this story was uh, told uh, chiastically. And you'll remember that chiastic structures are the primary literary technique uh, used by the scriptures. And as I've said before, chiastic structures occur on every single page of your Bible in one uh, shape, size, form, or another. And so let's go ahead and uh, let's look at the passage under consideration. Okay, we're going to start reading in Exodus chapter 2, uh, towards the end of the chapter, uh, verses 23, and then we'll finish in Exodus chapter 3, verse 8. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm not going to read this whole passage. We're just going to start reading in uh, verse 2. Let's start, let's start in verse 2 here. Okay, uh, there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. Okay, so at this point, let's, let's look at our first connection here, right here, where it says, when, when Moses thought, I will, now look at the next phrase, go over and see this strange sight. That phrase right there, go over and see this strange sight. Uh, notice how... <clears throat> Uh, in verse 4 here, it says, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, okay? He had gone over to look. So that's really your first connection right there. It's, it's the idea of going over and looking, okay? So you have go over right here and then and see the strange sight. So going over, his action of going over and then seeing. That's thematically connected in verse 4 where it says the Lord saw that he had gone over to look. And so you see this, the same two things, going over and then some form of looking or seeing. Okay, so let's go ahead and highlight that. And I'm just going to highlight that in yellow. And then right here where he says, I will go over and see this strange sight. Okay, we're going to uh, highlight that also, see this strange sight. Okay, now, <clears throat> we know that if a story is told uh, chiastically, that uh, the themes in the first half will repeat in the second half. Now, because we found two things so close to each other, uh, the question arises, uh, uh, well, we obviously know that the central axis has to be in between these two, okay? <laughs> this, one's, this is pretty easy if you, if, you, if you start off like this. In other words, right here he says, I will go over and see this strange sight. And then when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, those are the two themes on opposite halves. And so what that means is that this right here must be the central axis. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go and we're going we're gonna to give that a color too. Let's just uh, make that one gray, let's say. So let's keep going here. Now that we have uh, this theme here in yellow, okay, in the central axis, we know that if we, leave, if we read a little bit in front of this part in the yellow, that would be this area, and if we read a little bit on this side of this yellow phrase, we should find a common theme. So let's just start reading in verse 2. It says, There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. And then it says, um, Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. Now let's go look in after our chiastic structure. It says, God called to him 
from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here I am. And so uh, we can see a couple of themes here. Notice right here, it says that uh, the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire. Look at this phrase here, from within a bush, from within a bush. Now, if we go to um, the second part of verse four, it says God called to him from within the bush. Okay, so we've got uh, uh, from within a bush right here. And then we have from within the bush there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see that the next theme is basically from uh, verse two to uh, verse three here. Okay. And uh, let's make that, let's find a color for that. I don't have many choices. Uh, so I'm going to make that one green. And then right here, it says that God called to him from within the bush, Moses Moses. Okay, so we can see that our caustic structure is taking uh, shape. And actually, we should just go ahead and make this yellow also, uh, because that instead of chopping up the verse, okay, we'll just go ahead and, and fill in the verses here. And so uh, let's see what kind of let's see what kind of connections we can have here. Um, and something that I should have done on this first connection, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, find some connection right here. Um, I will go over, let's make that bold and italics. Go over because that's thematically connected to he had gone over. And so we'll make that bold and italics too. Okay. In other words, what I'm doing now is uh, we know that everything, we know that something in this yellow part is thematically connected with something in this yellow part. And now what I'm going to do is, uh, for instance, uh, so Moses thought, that's not part of the connection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the connection clear. The, the words or phrases that are thematically connected in the yellow, I'm going to make bold and italics. And it says that he went to see this strange thing. So I'm going to go ahead and bold and italicize C. And right here, he had gone over to look. So I'm going to bold and italicize look. So we can actually see the connections. Okay. Now right here in the second connection, what we saw was uh, the first connection that we saw was uh, that the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. So we'll go ahead and make that bold and italics. And that was thematically connected to right here, where it says God called to him from within the bush. Okay, so we'll make that bold and italics too. Okay, and so what we're seeing is that this is a classic chiastic structure where the themes in the first half are going to be repeated in the second half. Okay, now whenever you find one theme like this, you need to look for other ones. Okay, so for instance, right here it says there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire. Okay, so let's think about that. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire. And then the rest of the verse says, Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. Now let's go back down here and it says, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Okay, so now I don't see any connections and let's go ahead and add, and here I am, as part of that second connection there. Again, you know, just so we don't cut off the verses here. Um, and again, I don't see, uh, I don't see anything uh, in this phrase here. Moses said, "Here I am," or Moses, Moses. I don't see a comparable theme up here. But I do see something else. It says there the, it says the angel of the Lord appeared to him. The angel of the Lord appeared to him. And that's going to be thematically connected to where it says God called to him. Okay, you see that? The angel of the Lord appearing, the angel of the Lord appearing to Moses or appearing to him. That's thematically connected to God calling to him. And the connection there is pretty straightforward. You have a supernatural being um, uh, uh, making an appearance, communicating in some way with a human being. It's the angel of the Lord appearing to Moses versus God calling to Moses. And this both happened within the bush. 
Okay, so that's our uh, second major connection that we've seen. Okay, now let's read a little bit in front of our connection in green and a little bit after our connection in green and see what we can find. Let's just start in verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. It says, And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Okay? Now just think about that. And now let's go and let's read down here. In verse 5, it says, Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Now, what kind of connections can we get here? Well, let's, 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 uh, let's look at something here. Um, it says, And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness. Okay, he led the flock. Okay, the, the idea here is that uh, Moses is in motion. He's moving. He's making a movement. Now, uh, and what I'm going to do is I want to uh, highlight that. It says he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness, or he led the flock. That is thematically connected to right here when Adonai says, do not come any closer. Okay? He says, don't come any closer. Okay, so... <clears throat> The connection here is that uh, Moses is moving towards something. On the one hand, up here, he's moving, the, he led the flock uh, to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, okay? He's approaching Horeb is the point here. As he leads the flock uh, to the far side of the wilderness and he came to Horeb, he's approaching Horeb. Now, down here, Adonai says, do not come any closer, Okay, now the reason why Adonai said do not come any closer is because Moses was approaching the burning bush. Because remember he said, I'm going to go over and see the strange sight. So right here he's approaching the burning bush. So we can easily um, see a connection here. I'm going to go ahead and just highlight all of uh, verse 1 here. And let's choose another color for it. We'll use uh, this color here. And uh, verse 5, we're going to highlight it and use the same color. Now let's go and find the specific connections here. All right, it says that he led the flock, okay? Uh, and again, we said that that meant that he was approaching the flock. And he, he came and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. This is the place where Moses was approaching with the flock, okay? It's the fact that he's approaching, and he's approaching a destination. Okay, well, now, right here, uh, this is, that's thematically connected to do not come any closer, God said, okay? Because that is the motion, again, of moving close to something. And then it says, take off your sandals for the place you are standing is holy ground. So it's the location, it's the place, okay? So here are the two connections. The fact that he led the flock that the fact that he led the flock, uh, which me and he was he came, he led the flock to Horeb. In other words, he approached Horeb, he led the flock. That's thematically connected to do not come any closer, where he actually approached um, the burning bush. And then it says that he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. That is thematically connect, connected to the place where you are standing is holy ground. You see, Horeb is the uh, place that had the holy ground. So I think uh, we can see those connections there. Okay, so um, our chiastic structure is taking shape. Let's see how far we can go. Now, what you do is you just keep you just keep uh, expanding this as far as you can go. So let's look at, uh, let's start reading in verse 24. It says, God heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. Okay, so God heard their groaning. He remembered his covenant with uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. Now, if we start reading in verse 6, he says, Then he said, I am the God of your father. So if we look uh, and starting in verse 6, it says, Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of I Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, we should immediately see that connection right there. He just talked about 
uh, making a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now he's saying, I'm the God of Isaac, Abraham, uh, and Jacob. And it says, at this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God, okay? He's, he's afraid, he's, he's exemplifying uh, some fear here. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do this. Let's, let's, highlight, um, uh, let's highlight this part right here. Well, actually, let's keep reading here a little bit more, okay? It says, then the Lord said, I have indeed seen, indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. Oh my, look at that. I am concerned about their suffering. And right here, he says that he was concerned. So let's just go ahead and highlight uh, verses 24 and 25. We know that we see some connections in there. We'll give it this color, and then we'll highlight verses 6 and verses 7 because we see some connections there. Okay, so let's go back and, uh, and and let's go back and see what the actual um, what the what the actual connections are. Now look at right here. It says God heard their groaning. Okay, um, God heard their groaning. That right there is thematically connected um, down here on the other side. And let's see uh, where it is right here. Um, right here, he says. I have heard them crying out, okay? I have heard them crying out, all right? So I have heard them crying out is thematically connected to God heard their groaning, okay? And again, I think that, that connection is self-evident. Okay, let's see if we can uh, find another connection here. Um, da, da, da. It says, so God looked on the Israelites, okay? Uh, God looked on the Israelites. I'm going to highlight that because we're going to see um, another connection down here. Um, because it says, other than besides the fact it says that he has he has looked on them. Okay, that is thematically connected to this phrase here. He says, "I have indeed seen." Okay, I have in, I have indeed seen. Right here, the misery of my people in Egypt. So we're going to bold and italicize that. Okay. Okay, and so just remember that uh, I have indeed seen the misery of my people. That is thematically connected with God looked on the Israelites. Okay, another connection that's pretty obvious. Looking versus seeing. And uh, he had seen the misery of his people in Egypt, and but on the other hand, up here, he looked on the Israelites. So in both cases, there's two connections there, looking and then the Israelites. And I think um, we can uh, find a, a, uh, another connection here. Let's, uh, let's find this here. Uh, he was concerned. God heard, he remembered his coming. He looked and was concerned. Right here where it says uh, his covenant with Abraham with Isaac and with Jacob. I'm going to bold and italicize that because we saw that that phrase was repeated down here. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Okay, so there is another connection right there. So see, this, these uh, two ends here are just uh, are filled with connections. Okay, and then the last connection is right here where it says, he says he was concerned about them. Okay, we're going to bold and italicize that. Uh, he was concerned about them. And that is thematically connected to, in the second half, where he says, I am concerned about their suffering. So we're going to bold and italicize that. Okay, I am concerned about their suffering versus uh, he was concerned about them. Okay, so uh, as we can see here, um, what we did was we just started off with one simple connection uh, in verse three and verse in verse three and verse four, where it says, "I will go over and uh, and see." All right, and that was connected to he had gone over and looked. Okay, we got those two. We knew that this was a chiastic structure, so the central axis had to be somewhere in between these two yellow phrases. So that was pretty easy right there. And then we just began to uh, read up this way, and we began to read down this way. 
and um, we just saw what the connections were. Okay, so now let's just look at this in a uh, let's look at this chiastic structure in a different form. Okay, now we're going to take another look at the chiastic structure that uh, we just found, uh, but this time we're going to look at it um, in this beautiful graphic here. Hopefully, uh, this will make sense. Uh, we're looking at uh, Exodus chapter two, verse twenty-four, and we're going to go chronologically down to Exodus chapter three, verse seven. And as we said before in the chiastic structure, the themes in the first half, A, B, C, D, will repeat in the second half, A, B, C, D, in reverse order, pointing us to the central axis. So let's again take a look at element A and let's see what those thematic connections are. Um, God heard their groaning, okay? God heard its outcry. It says that God saw the children of Israel, uh, the children of Israel, right here. God saw the children of Israel, and right here it says, "Indeed, I have indeed seen the affliction of my people." It talks about here <clears throat> how God knew, okay, and down here he says, "I have known," and then it talks about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And in the second half, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So it is very clear to see how Exodus 2, verses 24 through 25, are thematically connected to Exodus chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. And again, this is just, uh, it's a beautiful way that your scriptures are arranged, okay? Now we're going to go to element B. This is the, the second element of our chiastic structure that we have found. Right here it says Moses approached, okay? He approached the mountain. Now, <clears throat> let me just say something here. Um, when we were in the Word document and we originally worked out the chiastic structure, I had to use uh, the New King James translation. But when I typed the chiastic structure into this PowerPoint, I used my Tanakh translation. And I generally like the Tanakh translation better. This is that's the Art Scroll Tanakh. Uh, this is the Stone Edition, and if you're interested in getting that, buying that, it's a Jewish translation. Uh, you can get it from Amazon.com. And um, again, you know, it's not a perfect translation. It has all sorts of uh, nuances of its own, but in general, I like using it uh, uh, when I study thematically. Okay, so uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 1b, it talks about how Moses approached the mountain. And uh, in Exodus 3, 5, Adonai said, don't approach, okay, the burning bush, don't approach, okay? And so uh, that right there, that right there is, a, is an excellent connection there. We can see it a lot easier than we did in the um, New King James. It says the place, the mountain uh, the place is the mountain of God. That's where Moses was approaching versus the place on which you stand is holy ground. Okay, so those, uh, the connection there being the two pieces of real estate that Moses was approaching. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to go to Exodus chapter 3 verse 2 and see how it's connected to Exodus chapter 3 verse 4b. And uh, I have a little commentary also. It says, The angel of Yahweh, or the angel of Adonai, appeared to him in a blaze of fire from amid the bush. All right? And down here it says, God called to him from amidst the bush. All right, now, what I want to concentrate on here is clearly we have a couple of connections. We have amid the bush in verse 2, and we, had, we have amid the bush in verse 4b. But we also have, in verse 2, the angel of Adonai appearing to Moses, okay? Now, the angel of Adonai appeared to Moses amid or from the bush. It was the angel of Adonai who appeared to him from the bush. Now, just a mere two verses later, it says, God called to him from amidst the bush, okay? Well, now the question is, who's amidst the bush? Is it Yahweh? Is it the angel of Yahweh or is it God? Well, <clears throat> remember that when we study thematically and we find a chiastic structure and we find these thematic connections, remember that uh, thematic connections exist to show equivalence between people, places, and things. 
clearly the bush from amid the bush is thematically equivalent or connected to amid the bush. It's the same thing. They're equal. And what I'm here to teach, what I'm here to show you is that this chiastic structure teaches that the angel of Adonai, the angel of Yahweh, is God himself. And this is something that we shouldn't be um, surprised of. This is something actually that can be seen apart from the chiastic structure, just even as you read the passage. But I think what happens is this chiastic structure really spells it out and points it out because we are simply following this thematic pattern that Adonai has set up. The angel of Adonai is God. The angel of Adonai appeared to him from the bush and God called to him from the bush. The angel of Adonai is God. We shouldn't be surprised at that. We know that throughout the Tanakh, throughout the Old Testament, <clears throat> excuse me, when people see the angel of Adonai, they are afraid for their lives and they say, for I have seen God. So in other words, despite what the rabbis may tell us and despite uh, the different ways that they try to uh, hide this connection uh, in, the, in the translations and everything, um, the people back in the time of our early Israel, they recognized that the angel of Adonai was divine. They didn't have any, they, they didn't seem to have a problem with that. And so uh, all I wanted to bring out in this teaching was this shows how this, chi this chiastic structure shows how the angel of Adonai is equated to God, both of them calling from the bush. And then we have Exodus uh, chapter 3, verses 3a and 4a being thematically connected. Moses thought, I will turn aside to see, right? I will turn aside to see. And then verse 4a, also he turned aside to see. And then uh, lastly, we have the central axis is why won't the bush burn, okay? The, the, the burning bush. So what have we learned here? Um, we've seen uh, quite clearly uh, an example of a chiastic structure. What we did is uh, we looked at uh, how to see these. Uh, we can we uh, do that by finding um, uh, finding similar passages and then looking for themes on either side of the two themes that we find. And um, this is a classic uh, uh, chiastic structure. This is a relatively small one, um, about um, one, two, three, four. Five, about uh, five verses long on on, uh, on one half and four on the other. Well, basically uh, four verses on each side and then the central axis. And as we said, these occur throughout the Bible. This is a small one. Some of them are larger. But uh, the main point I wanted to get across today was just kind of how to find one. And I just wanted you to see how once you find uh, one connection, how you can work your way toward the middle and you can work your way outward and uh, find one of these beautiful little gems. Then we also saw how this chiastic structure teaches us a little bit of theology because element C uh, connected, here let's see, let's see if we can go and find that because element uh, C, the angel of Adonai appearing to Moses amid the bush is thematically connected to God calling from amid the bush. Okay, and in both instances, the only the only thing the the um, the only thing that's different. There's two things that are different, and one that's the same. The supernatural being was amidst the bush in the second half, and the supernatural being was amid the bush in the first half. In the first half, the supernatural being being appeared to Moses. In the second half, the supernatural being called to Moses. The common connection there being that a supernatural being uh, communicated or made contact with Moses. Appeared versus called. But in one instance, it was the angel of uh, the, the supernatural being is referred to as the angel of Adonai. In the other, it's referred to as God. They were one and the same. So I hope this has been a blessing to you. May Adonai bless you in the name of Yeshua. May you know him, the one and only true God, and Yeshua the Messiah, whom he has sent. In Yeshua's name, Amen. Amen. I have the joy that is my salvation.